So let's start with a quick overview about the Poco C++ libraries. Um, there was something that uh, Bjarne Stostrup said some time ago about C++. Uh, without a good library, most interesting tasks are hard to do in C++, but given a good library, almost any task can be made easy. Um, and uh, yeah, obviously, especially in the beginning of C++, um, C++ lacked uh, for a large part the good library part. Um, of course, at one point, uh, the STL came along, uh, which have kept uh, a great bit. Um, but uh, still, if you wanted to do things like network programming in the early 2000s and uh, yeah, participate in, in the World Wide Web um, and do all the interesting things that came up like web services and so on, uh, it was a bit hard to do in C++. We had to do a lot of low-level things. Uh, actually, a couple of years ago, I uh, spent some time in the United States uh, and also uh, visited the Napa Valley. And <laughs> on the way in the car, I found this nice road sign, uh, the Boko Way. Um, and yeah, there are certain things that we do in Boko, which might not be the same as in some other libraries. Uh, yeah, we do it in the Boko Way. Um, the whole thing has, I cannot even believe it myself, been around for 20 years now. Um, we have now in the Poker C++ libraries around 350,000 lines of C++ code, plus a couple of thousand lines uh, C code that we use from uh, other uh, dependencies like uh, XPath, XMLPath, or and some other stuff. We have, we have 1,200 classes and uh, we will soon have uh, 8,300 uh, stars actually on GitHub, uh, which is uh, quite nice. Uh, also, we have uh, over the 20 years gotten around 200 uh, people who have uh, contributed uh, code to the Poco C++ libraries, which is also very nice. So uh, how came it to be? Well, basically, it uh, started uh, around, uh, or not around, it started in 2004. Uh, I had been doing... Uh, couple of years work in the semiconductor manufacturing uh, industry, mostly doing C++ programming. And uh, as it was back then, we had to do a lot of uh, low level and uh, also programming and also implementing our own libraries because not much uh, was available back then. And also we had to do like stuff on a number of different platforms. Uh, there was, of course, uh, Windows. There were different uh, Unix platforms like uh, Solaris, uh, HBUX, uh, Linux also, of course, uh, and obscure things like OpenVMS. Um, so I yeah, kind of became an expert in uh, programming C++ code that runs on many different platforms. And so I had this idea, hmm, I could write a book about that. And uh, yeah, next thing I did in the summer or in the spring of 2004 is uh, I wrote a book proposal, contacted uh, some uh, publishers and uh, one of the very big publishers actually got interested in my proposal and uh, agreed to do my book. So in the summer of 2004, um, started working on my book and wrote a couple of chapters. And then sometime, I think it was end of August or something like that, I got a yeah, very sad email. Unfortunately, the publisher said, we have decided that we can no longer publish your book um, because yeah, obviously 2004 um, was not the best time for C++. As you probably all know, it was a time when uh, languages like Java and .NET were very popular. And uh, yeah, also the Java people tended to say not very nice things about C++. And uh, yeah, that was uh, when I was uh, sitting there and thinking what to do next. And uh, yeah, actually for the book, I had came up with uh, some yeah, patterns and some ideas for how to write cross-platform C++ code. And so what I did was uh, started to put together a class library. And um, yeah, pretty much uh, 20 years ago, that was when I started to work on the Poker libraries. 
And uh, after about uh, half a year, I had uh, the first release ready, um, which, as you can see here, was uh, yeah already consisting of a couple of libraries. Um, but uh, otherwise, yeah, was still quite uh, yeah, should I say, uh, simple. So back then we had uh, basically the foundation library, which was doing the basic uh, platform abstraction stuff. So we had things like file system access, of course, uh, multi-threading. Uh, also a nice uh, framework for logging uh, and a couple of other things. Then we had a network library, which things like HTTP client and server, and also things like uh, support for protocols like SMTP for sending emails and so on. We had an XML library because obviously XML was very popular at the time. Um, then we had a, a general util library which basically contains <clears throat> a simple framework for building command line applications and also server applications that had things like uh, parsing of command line arguments and also handling of different uh, configuration file formats. And then we had a, a simple library called dblite, which was a very thin wrapper of uh, over uh, SQLite, uh, which was also uh, becoming popular back then. Um, then uh, things moved on over the years. Uh, so basically the first release of the libraries was published uh, in February 2005. And as it went, a uh, couple of weeks after I put the whole thing back then on SourceForge, I got uh, my first uh, contributor, uh, Alex, uh, who started uh, to uh, helping me uh, working on, on the Poké C++ libraries. And uh, yeah, then went a couple of uh, very exciting years. Um, or if you see it from the C++ perspective, <laughs> not so very exciting years uh, because we basically had uh, C++ 98 and then we had C++ uh, 03. And then um, not very much happened in the C++ world except uh, the TR1 proposal. Um, nevertheless, um, there were some things that went in favor of C++. For example, the whole world of uh, embedded systems. Um, these things were finally like becoming powerful enough that you could actually use uh, C++ on it. And also there was uh, the beginning of embedded Linux. I can uh, remember uh, back around 2005, 2006, uh, when you wanted to get like a development port to do embedded Linux development, you had to pay like uh, 2,000 euros uh, to get uh, a very slow device with very little memory. Of course, everyone knows nowadays we have uh, Raspberry Pi with eight gigabytes of memory and very fast CPUs, uh, so no comparison. But uh, basically, um, that was when when kind of the whole IoT thing uh, also slowly uh, came to be. Um, nowadays, if we look at uh, a picture of the Poco C++ libraries, uh, you can see it has uh, grown quite a bit. Uh, we've added uh, quite a number of libraries, uh, most notably, of course, a JSON library, because like JSON has in most fields, uh, yeah, replaced uh, XML as uh, yeah, the format for configuration files and other data. Then uh, we have the data library, which basically uh, is an abstraction layer for different uh, SQL-based databases. Um, then we have also clients for other databases, databases like Redis, uh, or uh, as it's now called, uh, or, or forked into Velky. Uh, also MongoDB, uh, we have a library called Active Record, which basically gives you the Active Record pattern, uh, which is a nice little yeah, abstraction layer above the data library for usual uh, standard uh, database access. So you don't have to yeah, write a SQL query for, for every single thing uh, you do, especially for pretty standard queries. Um, then we also have things like, uh, yeah, crypto support based on OpenSSL, 
Uh, we have TLS support for all the classes. We have JSON web tokens. Uh, we have, uh, since a couple of months, a Prometheus um, library. So you can also export uh, metrics that can then be uh, imported in Prometheus uh, or other monitoring tools. And uh, you can then build nice dashboards out of it. And uh, so as you can see from, from the whole picture, the direction where Boko goes is more like make Boko a, a good uh, library for building uh, modern cloud-based and internet-based uh, uh, applications. Of course, uh, in uh, 2011, we had the new C++ standard, C++11, um, which uh, included uh, a couple of new features, like, for example, uh, threading library and also uh, some other stuff that was already in POCO. And, uh, of course, the newer standards that followed, like C++14, C++17, uh, now C++20. Um, so what's our yeah, relationship to that? Um, basically, we try to uh, follow um, and use new C++ features as they can along. However, as a library that is used by a lot of uh, people, for example, in embedded systems development, uh, we cannot always be like at the top of C++ because um, yeah, people are often stuck with older compilers. Um, and so we tend to, yeah, be always a couple of versions behind the current C++ version. So right now for Boku development, we are basically on C++ 17, uh, but we expect to go to C++ uh, 20, not too far in the future. Uh, of course, that has also brought a number of uh, interesting uh, challenges for us, uh, because as I mentioned, the new C++ standards um, kind of have the same features or some of the same features that we have in Boko in the standard library. One example would be threading. Another example would be, for example, file system access with C++17 and uh, also some other things. And uh, of course, uh, we have to think about that. And of course, the first idea we had was, yeah, uh, we cannot completely get rid of, for example, the Boko thread class, because there is a lot of existing code out there that uses that. And we cannot simply expect from yeah, our users to rewrite, rewrite the applications uh, uh, with the Boko thread class uh, or replacing the Boko thread class with uh, STD thread or STD chase thread class. And also there were a number of other aspects uh, that prevent us uh, from doing that because one of the ideas we had was, uh, yeah, let's keep the Boko thread class, but implement it in terms of uh, STD thread. Uh, problem is um, STD thread uh, cannot do some of the things that uh, Boko thread can do. Uh, example for that would be, for example, in an embedded uh, application, it's sometimes uh, necessary to uh, set the, the stack size, the maximum stack size of a thread. And you cannot do this with standard C++. So basically, that was one of the reasons we had to keep uh, the Boko thread class and have it implemented on top of whatever thread API the operating system gives us. Another example would be uh, the, the smart pointers, specifically uh, shared pointer. So as you all know, uh, C++ now has a shared pointer class. Boko also has a shared pointer class. Um, and the idea was to simply implement the Boko shared pointer class with uh, the STD shared pointer class as the underlying uh, implementation. Uh, and so the, we did a prototype, prototype of that. And then people started complaining because suddenly their code was a lot slower. Um, reason, of course, being that the uh, STD's uh, shared pointer class can do a lot more uh, than uh, the POCO shared pointer class, and therefore it's a lot more complex and also has uh, not the same uh, performance for that reason. So that was another reason why we basically decided, yeah, okay, let's keep the POCO shared pointer class. And yeah, we now have multiple shared pointer classes that we have to deal with, but yeah, that's the way it is. 
Um, same goes, of course, on uh, with file system access. We have uh, file system access classes in POCO. Um, there are also file system classes now in C++ 17, but of course, the same problem. There is a lot of existing code out there that makes use of uh, the POCO classes, so we cannot simply uh, replace them. Another fun story that we uh, uh, can tell <laughs> as uh, the POCO community is uh, a couple of years ago, uh, there was some discussion in the C++ standard community um, about like adding some basic networking support to the standard library. Uh, and I think that was even before uh, Boost ACO got uh, popular. And so uh, Alex and I, uh, mostly Alex, at the idea basically to write a proposal based on the IP address class in Boko. Uh, the IP address class in Boko is very nice because it can uh, contain both IPv4 and IPv6 addresses, which makes uh, working with it uh, very easy. Of course, uh, once we submitted that to the standard committee, we got like uh, very bad responses because people were screaming at us we cannot use your implementation of an IP address because our application has to keep millions of IP addresses in memory and your uh, proposal uses way too much resources to do that. And uh, yeah, that uh, basically ended then our involvement in the C++ <laughs> uh, standards community. And uh, yeah, we decided to keep doing things our way and uh, yeah. I think in the meantime, uh, in C++, we at least have, do we actually, do we have a UI class or just a proposal? I actually don't really know. Anyway, so what are our current plans? Um, there will be a new release uh, coming out, uh, yeah, hopefully end of this month. Um, it's uh, mostly maintenance and, and bug fixes. Uh, a big amount of work um, that we now have to do is like uh, updating or keeping our external dependencies uh, up to date uh, because people keep finding security issues in C libraries or in the C libraries that we use. So we have to basically constantly have a look at them and uh, yeah, incorporate the bug fixes. And then uh, one other nice feature that Alex has been working on is uh, stack trace support. So you will now have a compile time option to enable uh, the exceptions that uh, the, the Boku exception class basically uh, to contain uh, stack traces, which will make debugging uh, things at runtime uh, hopefully a lot easier. As I mentioned, the whole thing will be basically a compile time option. So if you don't want to have that overhead, uh, you can simply uh, leave it out, which is actually the default. So if you want that, you actually have to enable it. And then hopefully for later this year or early next year, uh, finally some HTTP2 support uh, for the network library, uh, which is something that has been widely requested. And also, finally, hopefully, some YAML support uh, so that you can basically use the YAML files with the Boko configuration uh, framework. And there will be a couple of other things like, uh, yeah, JSON log formatter. Uh, and uh, this is basically uh, intended for people writing, uh, yeah, server applications in C++ that they want to integrate with all the different, uh, yeah, um, DevOps and, and, and uh, monitoring uh, frameworks uh, out there. And finally, another thing that I'm again working on is a book. So after 20 years, there shall be sometime in the future a book that, uh, yeah, gives you some background information and some more code examples, how to use the Boko libraries. Okay, um, so that much for now for the Boko libraries. Uh, let's now move on to the next big thing. 
um, called Machina.io. 